Hello, this is Dr. Marty Klein with another video quickie. Today I want to talk about the sex laws of the universe. Yes, there are some. Now I've done some 40,000 sessions of sex therapy and couples counseling with individuals and couples. And in some ways, I'm, I confess, I know a little bit less about people now than I did when I started back in 1980. But after 40,000 hours, half before broadband internet and cell phones and half since, there are a few things that I know for sure. So let me share with you some of the sex laws of the universe. Number one, the solution to your partner's lack of sexual enthusiasm is not more sex, <laughs> and it's rarely more exotic sex. Number two, infidelity. People who felt powerless or ignored before their partner was unfaithful are going to hold on to the issue of their partner's infidelity for as long as they derive power from it. People with only a tenuous sense of their own desirability or lovability will also hold on to the pain of their partner's infidelity. It's valuable data supporting their own low self-esteem. Number three, when should you talk to your under 18 kids about sexuality? Well, if you haven't done it in the last few months, it's time, regardless of their age. We talk to kids over time, over and over again, about sexuality. It's not a one-time conversation, is it? Any more than talking to them about nutrition or their health or money is a one-time conversation. Let's continue with sex laws of the universe here. People who respond to their bodies aging, you know, wrinkles, unwanted flesh, stiffness, etc. People who respond to their bodies aging by losing interest in sex should realize that that is a one-way strategy. It's not like your body will at some point start to look younger and you can resume feeling sexual desire. No, the challenge of being human is to realize that your sexuality is not dependent on looking or moving like you used to. Now, here's another law of the universe. Everyone wants their sexual partner to enjoy sex, of course. But insisting that your partner climax every time you have sex together is a guaranteed way to reduce sexual pleasure and desire and frequency. Now, here's another law. Emotions affect everyone's interest in sex, every single person, regardless of gender or age or anything. Emotions affect everyone's interest in sex, every single person, and every single feeling, anger, sadness, self-consciousness, confusion, fear, humiliation, stubbornness, competitiveness, regret, eagerness, gratitude, pride, appreciation, hope. Emotions affect everyone's interest in sex. And if your emotions affect your interest in sex, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. That's the way the human nervous system is wired. Now let's talk about arranged marriages for a second. Here in Silicon Valley, I work with a lot of couples who are in arranged marriages. Almost all were virgins on their wedding day. Now, I have no quarrel with this, except that such people are almost never adequately prepared for marital sex. The resulting shame and confusion and self-criticism and emotional alienation typically makes the arranged wedding night a painful disaster. And worse, this launches the couple on a lifelong story of inadequacy, sexual mismatch, blaming, and isolation, from which, in my experience, they rarely recover. Well, let's talk about non-arranged uh, couples. When people don't want sex with a partner they love, here are a few questions that can help explain why. What are you angry about? What are you afraid of? What do you need to talk about? And are you concerned about disappointing your partner in bed? If you look at those four questions, almost invariably, you can figure out why you don't want sex with someone that you have a lot of affection for. Mm. Now let's talk about masturbation for a second. The idea that masturbation ruins sexual relationships is just silly. No one would abandon great partner sex for the privilege of self-stimulation. What does frequently happen is that a couple's sex life collapses due to kids or career or aging or resentment. The couple doesn't work together to repair it, and then one or both turn to masturbation as a reliable source of comfort, stimulation, and excitement. Many men do not climax during intercourse. 
I have said this a gajillion times, and I'll say it again. Many men do not climax during intercourse. Both they and their partners may see this as a failure with accompanying criticism or self-criticism. It would be easier to enjoy sex and to express preferences if our culture, and therefore individuals, didn't have this very unrealistic expectation and pathologized everything other than a guy climaxing during intercourse. Now, there's nothing wrong with open marriage or consensual non-monogamy or polyamory if all involved parties are self-aware and enthusiastically on board. But abruptly informing a partner, we're now both free to do what we want, and getting involved with someone else five minutes later, this is not in the consensual spirit of open relationships, and it rarely works well. Here's another law of the universe. Say you were getting occasional massages with happy endings and lying about it. Say your wife found out. Say you stop the massages permanently and you answer a lot of questions about this secret infidelity in conversations that always end in tears. Say she wants you to promise you'll tell her whenever one of these masseuses texts you. Some of them can be pretty aggressive marketers. And say that when you do tell your wife that you got an unwanted text from Maria or Shamika, she gets really angry even though you didn't invite the contact and you don't actually want it. In these circumstances, how many men would actually keep telling their wives, oh, I got a marketing text today from someone asking if I want a hand job, if they knew that that would be followed by tears and accusations? That's why I discourage men from making those kinds of promises. They don't build trust. They simply provide more options for someone to feel bad about their spouse or their relationship. Another law of the universe? For many adults, the bonding that results from sex is more important than the pleasure that they have during sex, even if they have a lot of pleasure. If so, people wanting better sex should focus on creating sexual experiences that feel more relaxed and intimate, not more intense, exotic, and porn-like. I frequently see women for therapy whose husbands or boyfriends have labeled them low desire. And these are women, frequently, who really like sex, if it's gentle, warm, comfortable, and lighthearted. These guys are typically surprised when I point this out, and they often get angry as if it's some kind of bad news. To create a better sexual relationship, these guys have to change their ideas about who their partner is, and that can be quite challenging. Well, say you don't like your body very much. And say your partner likes your body a lot. And say you don't quite understand how that could be. You'd have to decide who's the more important reference point. Your partner who finds your body arousing or the general public that you imagine would reject your body the same way that you had. Rejecting your partner's desire for your body because you hate your body is foolish. And justifying that with you only desire my body because you love me that trivializes the alchemy of love, and it wastes a precious connection that eventually may fade. Why would you argue with a partner who insists that they find you attractive? Well, thanks for joining me for today's video quickie. Uh, if you want to get pinged every time I publish another one of these, just hit the subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. Thanks for joining me.